get yourself together after after worship like that. Yes, oh Jesus. But we have a special guest today. This is Tanisha Thomas is going to collaborate with us and dance with her ministry. And we ask that she comes up while we sing with her. And we really want you to pay attention to these words of the song because Anything that you need, anything that you want, anything that you're struggling with, we want you to be able to know that you can take every single one of those things to God in prayer.
We ask all of these things in Jesus' name. We do pray. Let all God's people say amen. 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 And amen. Thank God for Sister Tanisha for worshiping the dance today. God bless you. Thank God for this anointed praise and worship team. Amen. We thank God for them. And thank God for all of you that are here today. Amen. amen. All of our visitors, our guests, our first time guests. I see you. You're welcome, welcome, welcome. Amen. I'm before we get into it, I need somebody to get excited about the word. Amen. Amen. Come on, come on. Get excited about the word. Praise God for your neighbor. They may be down and out today. They don't have the strength, oh God, to push through what they're going through. But you just praise God for them. Amen. So sometimes praise is contagious. If I can see that, that you're praising God with all the hell that you're going through, surely I can praise and worship God with what, what I'm going through. So I just need somebody just clap those hands, amen. Praise God for me. Help me. Hallelujah. Oh God, we need you. We need you, God. Amen. Today, 11, 4 through 6. Amen. I'm supposed to have a there something. <laughs> and she let the pastor do the slides. <laughs> Numbers chapter 11, verses 4 through 6. Amen. And the word of God says this. Now the mixed multitude who are among them yielded to intense craving. So the children of Israel also wept again and said, Who will give us meat to eat? We remember the fish which we did eat. We ate freely in Egypt the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. But now our whole being is dried up. There is nothing at all except this manna before our eyes. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Today, I want to use for a subject, my appetite is different. My God, my appetite is different. The first time we said my faith is different. Last time we said my vision is different. And today, my appetite. Can anybody touch and agree with me today and say, my appetite is different. I, I don't want McDonald's. I don't want Taco Bell. I don't want Burger King. Ever 
everybody else is just passing her. Somebody missed that. <laughs> Many of us, we are arguing with God about something that he's telling us we cannot take on our fight. We're arguing with God and we're wondering why everybody else is passing us. It's because God is saying, you can't take this on the, you can't take this extra baggage, but you want to say, God, are you, are you pleading with God? God, can I please take it? I just love it. I just want it. And he said, no. And everybody is passing you by. I get, to, I get up there and I had, I had just bought this lotion and they told me, they said, you, your lotion is more than 3.5 ounces, 3.4 ounces. I said, you can have that because where I'm going, I can get some more. You got to have the mindset that what I'm leaving behind, good God of mine, where I'm headed is better than what I'm leaving behind. You can have it, you can take it, and I mean, what God, God, you said you want it, you can have it. I mean, you got something better for me. The children of Israel, they're in the wilderness. And I need to encourage somebody here today. Don't get discouraged in the wilderness. Don't get frustrated in the wilderness. Matter of fact, Jesus had to go through the wilderness. And he was hungry. When he got hungry, that's when he went. I didn't have that on paper here. When he got hungry, that's when God sent him through the wilderness. When you, when God placed a hunger on the inside of you, that's when Satan shows up. Because the wilderness placed your hunger and your appetite on trial. And how God operates is, he takes you from Egypt to the wilderness to the promised land. In church, all we talk about is promise. Promises, promises, promises. God's going to give you a house. God's going to give you a Yeah, God's going to give you a home. Yeah, God's going to give you this. He's going to give you a new job. Yeah, we, we praise God. God's going to give you a wilderness. Huh? <laughs> we shout about everything that's good, the promises of God. But when we talk about the wilderness, we don't want to shout. When we talk about a closed door, we don't want to praise God. But if you knew what was on, on, on the other side of every one of those closed doors, some of y'all are running around the church right now. Because they, behind some of those closed doors, God said, that's a no good man. I don't need to open that door for you. Oh, that credit denial, you may need the car anyway. Your credit that get from insurance ratio is out of way. You can't afford it. So he closed the door. You want to praise God while you're in the wilderness. And what happens is, because we hear about promises all the time, that when, when the wilderness show up, when hard times show up, we want to give up and quit because we don't teach you how to make it through the wilderness. We think because I give my life to Christ, because I'm saved, shaken by being with the Holy Ghost and the evidence of speaking in tongues, that I'm not supposed to have any bad days. But when the wilderness show up, Ah, there's power in the wilderness. There's, there, there's, there are blessings in the wilderness. We like to say that God takes us from levels to levels and uh, dimensions to dimensions. But what it looked like is he takes us from levels to wilderness to levels. From dimensions to wilderness to dimensions. He takes us into the wilderness to reset our appetite. We'll read the text here. Verse 4 says this. It says, Now the mixed multitude who were among them yielded to intense craving. When, when I read this, it said, Now the mixed multitude. Now, I've read this a lot of times, but I never really studied this text. When the children of Israel left Egypt, there were slaves who came with them who were not Egyptian. <laughs> That's what they talk about, the mixed multitude. That there were people with them that were foreigners that say, if your God got all this power, I'm going to go with you. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not an Israelite, I'm a foreigner. Matter of fact, there were some Egyptian slaves that left with the children of Israel. Sometimes God tells us that you got too many 
people in your multitude. When you have a mixed multitude, it brings on intense cravings. And the Spirit of God showed me that some of us are mixed in the multitude and the wilderness is needed to separate the multitude. Because the promise isn't for them, the promise is for you. There wasn't anything wrong with these slaves that came with the Israelites, but the promise wasn't for them. It was for the children of God. And there's somebody in here today, your appetite is different. You don't want to hang around the people you used to hang around. Ah, there's some denominations that you grew up in. You said, I just, something ain't right. I just, I, it feels like a bird and it's sucking the life out of me. The church you grew up in all of your life, something is not right and you're frustrated. God is changing your appetite. There's some relationships you used to enjoy, but now your appetite is different because the wilderness changes taste buds. Oh, I'm going to tell you, I, the wilderness changes taste buds. In the Gospel of Luke, chapter 13, there was a man who was taking care of a vine yard for three years. And the tree did not produce any fruit. And the owner of the vine yard came and said, cut it out. But the man in the tent and said, why are you going to cut it down? He said, as, he said, let me dig around it Come on now. Come and on place now. some fertilizer on it. Hey. He said, let me dig around it. Let me remove what's around it. Hey. Hey. There's some stuff around it that ain't going no good. He said, let me dig around it. And watch, he said, let me fertilize it. Come on. Come now let me tell you what fertilizer is. Fertilizer is poop. Huh. Duh. Yeah, you call me farmer. Yeah. <laughs> Supervisors over them so they can get up off and grow. They, they won't go. So let me put some duty on that relationship and maybe they get up out of Sometimes God has to put some mess in your situation in order for you to grow, in order for you to go. The wilderness changes your appetite. The wilderness, it changes your community and the people around you. Your circle always offers you their diet. Mm, come on now. I'm preaching right now. Y'all just say me. Yeah. Your circle always offers you their diet. Yeah. You have to be careful how you handle your connections. Because when you're making big faith steps, you need some friends that got some faith. Yeah. I, I need some friends that can see what God see. I need some friends that can hear what God is saying. I don't need no friends that take me to the club. I need some friends that take me to the altar. I don't need some friends that gonna put great clothes on me. But I don't need some friends that help me take that dance out of me. Your atmosphere affects your cravings. Ah, I know it. Last week I told you, I told you, I said, if you want to know what someone is seeing, mm. listen to what they're saying. Oh, this week I'm going to tell you, if you want to know where someone is headed, ah. check their appetite. You do not end up where you desire. You end up with what you crave. Many of us wouldn't be in the situation we're in today if we did not crave it. Ah, I got to put it the way Pastor Love said. Some of y'all need to stop replying to those what are you doing texts. The hello texts. What are you? Somebody need to stop replying to them because you crave it. Because it look good. Because it sound good. Because you got low self-esteem and they said, oh, you put some sweet little things in your ear because it sounds good. You need to turn away from it. Just stop by my house for about five minutes. We, we, we ain't gonna do nothing. No, the devil is alive. Our cravings get us in all kinds of trouble. I'll only try one time. That one time turn into addiction. I don't know what you're 
your addiction is, but whatever it is, it started because you had a craving. My Lord. The text says, the mixed multitude, uh, they, they were together and it yielded intense cravings. And then it says this, and I'm done. The children of Israel also wept again and said, who will give us meat to eat? They began to name all this good food. And they said, do you remember the fish which we did eat freely in Egypt? The cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, the garlic. But now all we have is this dried up manna. They were crying to go back to Egypt because they still had an appetite for Egypt. God delivered them out of Egypt. But well, yet they still had an appetite. And many of us are still in the wilderness because we won't change our appetite. I, I'm sure the melons tasted good. I'm sure the fruit smelled good. I'm, I'm sure it looked good. But God was trying to change their taste buds. Because he said the promised land is on the other side. He said in the promised land there's greater. There's a land flowing with milk and honey. There's wells that you did not dig. There's crops that you did not sow. When you make up your, your mind to change, change your appetite, he says, the promised land is on the other side. See, change will make you do some crazy things. Come on now. Come on. Come on. I was talking to this guy this week. He <laughs> It's hard to use testimonies. I ain't calling nobody name. Wait, he said, he said, he said, he said, Pastor. He said, I got a problem with women. He said, I got the problem with women is so bad. He said, he said, I had to turn my phone off. My Lord. I said, brother, that's look, he didn't change the phone number. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't delete some contact. He said, I turned the phone off. Sometimes somebody said, it don't take all of that. But some folk can take all of that and some more. He's not trying to get my life together. He's not trying to, I'm trying to change my situation. He turned the whole phone off. I don't have a cell phone no more. I can't handle this stuff. My Lord. See, Satan wants you to stay in the wilderness. The devil can't destroy you. But he would tempt you to make decisions to destroy yourself. Eve fall on this plan. <laughs> she had everything in the garden. She did. You ain't got to work. Come on now. Just sit here and enjoy my presence. But yet, Satan gave her the wrong appetite. Come on now. He tempted her. And she did eat. And that is what he does to us. When we're in the wilderness, he tempts us. We give up and we want to go back to Egypt. But the wilderness is meant to change your appetite and, change, and thrust you into your future. I was looking. I know I like to Google everything. And when your appetite is different, it says that you get hunger, hunger pain, hunger pains. I said hunger pains. Hunger pains, you have a feeling of emptiness. It says you have cravings. It says that there's contractions in your stomach. And I, just, I almost shouted when I, when I read that. Y'all know I love something about birthing a baby, the contractions in your stomach. It said, it said when you have hunger pains, that, that there's contractions in your stomach. Then I said, well, I said, how do you get rid of the hunger pain? It says that you have to eat protein. You have to eat meat. You have to drink some water. See, many of us, we're trying to fill up on sugar. When we come here, we, we shout about the promises of God and, and the promises of God that they, they were great. We, we come here and, and, and we, we want a feel-good message. We want sugar. Th two days ago, I walked in my house and there was some candy on the, on the table and 
I sat down, me and my dad, we were sitting down and I had a couple pieces. I said, man, this candy is good. I kept on eating until I got sick. And many of us, we are partaking in things that make, uh, in, in the beginning, is good for you. But too much of it makes you sick. Denominations, too much of it becomes a form of godliness. I was just talking to a young lady this week and, and she said all Baptist folks are going to hell because they don't believe in the Holy Ghost. She said only my denomination is going to heaven. Too much of it. It's a cult. It's bad for you. But you got to have a hunger at first for God. Everything that you're going through right now I said, this ain't for everybody because everybody's not in the wilderness season. I just said, follow this message and pick it back up because it's on the way. Amen. 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 Everything that you're going through right now, he says, all things is working for your good. Thank you, Lord. This wilderness experience that, you, that, 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 that you're going through is for you for the next level. Amen. And how long you stay in it is determined when you change your appetite. Amen. Amen. The priest team members, they've been going through, a couple people in the church have been going through a fast this weekend. The Lord, next month my sermon series is called Refocus. He's been telling me refocus. We're going to talk about refocus. It's time for us to focus. Because you can have vision and you still can't see. Talk about vision. Yeah, you can have vision. You stick when you go to the doctor and you sit down, it tells you, I can see those letters, but then you say you're focused. Focus on that. What's the lowest line you can see? You focus on it. We're everywhere. We're, we're not focused. We're talking about our individual lives, our personal lives. And God is saying it's time to focus. And we're going to go on a fast to get us to focus. Yes, it's good to be different. Some stuff only come out through fasting and prayer. Throughout the next week, we're going to start this fast at the beginning of March as we go through our sermon series of focus. And this is going to be a 30 day fast. And I want all of you to choose one thing. One thing that you just, it just takes up all of your time. That you just can't, it's just hard to live without it. Uh, we're not, it don't have to be food, it could be electronic device, it could be social media. But I want you that one thing. That you just have to have. I, I can't. I wake up in the morning. I get on it, or I gotta eat. I have, I just love some 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 Dr Pepper. Whatever it is. I don't want everybody to do food because food ain't a problem for somebody. You just be, you just be on a diet, amen. But whatever it is, we're gonna fast for thirty days in the month of March to get us to refocus because we've gotten off track with everything that's going on in, in this world in the community. We've got we've lost focus. And I believe God is telling us it's time to refocus. It's time for us to change our appetite. To have that different appetite. To hunger and to thirst after righteousness. It's time out. If you're looking, if you look around, if you're on social media, in your community, people are dying left and right. And I truly believe God is telling us, I'm not saying God sent the pandemic, he sent anything, but God can use anything to bless us. He's using this to give us an appetite for him. When you do that, he changes your situation. You're not in it just because of what you did. You're in it because of what he wants to take you. And as soon as you make up in your mind that I'm done with this, you can have it, TSA, you can have it. I got something better. The promise is calling me. These contractions, this hunger pain that I have, God, I hear you calling me. Father God, we thank you today. We thank you for your word. Father, I thank you for the people that are here. The people under the sound of my voice. Father God, I ask right now 
that as many of us will, we're in a season of wilderness. But as you replace those things in our life, as you remove those things, I ask that you replace it with your spirit, with your power, with your anointing, with vision, with authority. Change our appetite, God, to that person, God, that are dealing with the battlefield of the mind. Satan is, is attacking them left and right. They're struggling with their identity. God, I pray right now that you give self-worth today. But to that person who's trying to find out what it is that you have for them to do. They've been praying. What is it? What is my, my vision, God? What is, what is the vision you have for my life? What, is, what are my gifts, God? Ask God that you would speak to them. Stir up the gift on the inside of us. Stir up the spirit that's on the inside of us. Help us, God, to walk boldly before you. God, I ask that as your people pray, they're making their requests known unto you. They're talking to you, God, because they're, they're telling you what they need, God, what, they, what, 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 what they're going through. You already know, God, but you said we have not because we ask not. And as they cry out with their hearts to you, God, I ask that your spirit will fall fresh upon them. God, we just don't want happiness because whatever happens dictates how we feel. But God, I pray that you would give us joy, restore the joy of our salvation. Satan is defeated. God, you are exalted. So God, I pray that you would have your way in your people. Sweep across this land. Help us, God, to be focused. Put our eyes on you. God, I pray for this community. I pray for those that are lost. I pray for those that are trying to find their way. Those that are hurting, those that are suffering. God, you called us to be the salt. You called us to be the light. Send that light their way. Send the salt their way, God. But we will go tell them about a living Savior who can save our sin sick souls. Father God, I pray for that person that's lost here today, that person who's watching us live, that they'll know you're the part of their sins. God, I pray you give them the courage that you would draw them closer to you right now. That they will confess with their mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in their heart that your son Jesus died for our sins. That you are the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father but through Jesus Christ. God, I pray that they would not tune out from the service, leave the service without knowing you, knowing what they would spend all eternity. They would have that blessed assurance to be absent from the bodies, to be present with the Lord. God, draw them to you right now. We ask all of these things in Jesus' name. That all God's people say amen. Amen. amen, amen, and amen. If you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior, and you made that profession of faith today, if you're watching us, send us a message and let us know. That you gave your life to Christ. If you're here today, we're not going to ask you to come to the altar, but I ask that you raise your hand. Raise your hand today. If salvation. Salvation. Amen. I saw one hand. I see one hand. Amen. The next scene, partnership. Maybe there's somebody here today. You want to partner with this ministry. You say, hey, I'm a member somewhere else. We don't, you can be a member somewhere else, and you can still partner here somewhere else. Where you can serve, we tell you where you can serve, where you can you can sit under leadership that's gonna allow you to use your gifts, who's gonna sow into you, who's gonna pray with you, who's gonna walk on this journey with you. If that's you today, ask that you raise your hand as well. Salvation, amen. I see your hands, I see your hands. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on and thank God for our, our new partners, amen. Come on and praise God for that one hand. 
Bless you. May God keep you. Here's our prayer. 